Hey everyone, welcome to the, welcome back, all right. Hey everyone, welcome back to the server-side rendering with JavaScript Framework series. In the previous video, we switched a React app to Preact, and we also avoided an extra network request because we're already rendering that data on the server. We don't need to be getting it again over the network on the client. So in this episode, we're going to take that server-side rendered React app, and we're going to compare it against the server-side rendered Preact app. And in case you are wondering, I went back and I refactored that React app so it no longer does that extra network request, so it's a level playing field. So let's uh, dive down into the laptop and get started. So to the left here, I have a Preact app, and to the right is a React. So I'm going to go and inspect the source for the React app, and you can see that we have the window data and we have a server-side rendered version. So now I'm going to inspect and go to network and set the regular 2G, go to performance and do a profile. Now that that's done, we can go and inspect what's going on. So we can see that it took 329 milliseconds to get the HTML and then 321 milliseconds to get the CSS. And then after that point, we could actually render our page and there was meaningful HTML and CSS. But even though that was the case, it still will take us 1.82 seconds to download the JavaScript. And then once that's finished, now our app is interactive. So that happened in just about two, two and a half seconds. So now let's go and profile the Preact app. So I'm going to view page source just to show you that we do have the window data and it is server-side rendered. Go to the network and make sure to hit regular 2G for 300 milliseconds of latency. So now I'm going to go to the performance tab, do a profile, and we now have our results. So you can see that it took 392 milliseconds to get the HTML and then 325 for the CSS, and only 559 milliseconds for the JavaScript, which is really great because we were actually able to be interactive at about 1.2, 1.3 seconds or so. And if we go and compare that against the React app, which was 45 kilobytes, it took 1.82 seconds to download this, which really pushed back our time to interactive. So in this case, we were able to save all this time by switching over Preact to do the exact same thing. So now I'm going to go and simulate a real-world page view with web page test. So I'm going to select Moto Gen 4 in Chrome and make sure that I'm on mobile 3G slow. I'll do one for the React app. And then while that's happening, go and create one for Preact. So now that the React one is done, let's take a look at the results. We can see that the load time was about 1.8, 1.9 seconds, first byte in about a second, and first render in about 1.3. And we can see that our first interactive is actually pretty good at 1.8 seconds. And we can see that our first interactive was also about at the same time as load. And it's really good to be aware that first interactive is in beta. So right now you want to do several runs on this to make sure that this number stays consistent or something in this area. And also looking at the film strip view can be really helpful as well. So if we look at the other runs, you can see that one was 1.8, this one was 1.8, and the last one was two seconds. So it's all just about in the same ballpark. So now if I click film strip view, Make sure I'm at 0.1 seconds. Let's start at the beginning. So scrolling, you can see it took about almost a second or so for the HTML and about 224 milliseconds for the CSS. And then at that point, we were able to render our server-side rendered app. However, web page test stops us at 1.4 seconds. And you can see here that our JavaScript bundle goes beyond that. And that's because at this point, React has to create a virtual version of your app and compare it against the server-side rendered version to make sure it doesn't need to do a re-render. So we can see that our first interactive for the React app was 1.8 seconds. So now if we go and check out the Preact app, you can see our load time was 1.2 seconds 
and then the first byte, one second, the first render, 1.3. And the first interactive was at 1.3 seconds as well. So that's almost half a second faster than the React app. So if we go and view the other runs as well, you can see that we had 1.2, 1.2, and 1.2. So it was fairly consistent across this test. So we'll go into the film strip view at 0.1 seconds, and it took about 938 milliseconds for the HTML to download and parse and then 218 for the JavaScript and 209 for the CSS. And what you'll notice here is that the JavaScript isn't protruding out to the right of the timeline. It actually finishes at about 1.2 seconds. And that means that our app booted up. We didn't have to do the network request and we were interactive in just 1.3 seconds. So with Preact, we can see that it was 1.3 seconds and then React, 1.8. So as you can see with Preact, we were able to get interactive much faster than we were with React. And that's mostly due to the fact that Preact is much lighter than React. And while Preact seems all magic and rainbows and unicorns and stuff, that it's not always so easy to switch from React to Preact, because if you're really deep in the React tool set and ecosystem, not all of those tools are going to have a clear path to Preact. So if you're thinking about switching from React to Preact for saving on your library size, make sure you do your research and know that all your tools are able to move. And also, know that just because you're switching from React to Preact doesn't mean you're going to see this massive savings. If you have a lot of application-specific code, that's not going to get any smaller. What's going to get smaller is the actual difference between the library size. So it's a great move, but you still need to be frugal about what you include in your app. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe for more videos in this series. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back to the server-side rendering JavaScript frameworks with... That's all it is. Okay, all right, set it. I think we're done here. <laughs>